We're now joined by another member of the Ways and Means Committee, a leader on health care issues representing the 3rd District of Louisiana. Dr. Bustani, you're recognized. Please proceed with your testimony. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's great to see everybody on the dais there. And uh, I want to thank my friend and colleague, Mr. Thompson from California, uh, for describing our bill, H.R. 2911, uh, which would give small business relief from this onerous penalty. Uh, if you recall, going back into the last Congress, I questioned Secretary Liu about this penalty, and Secretary Liu admitted that this was a, a serious problem for small businesses, and the administration actually put these penalties on hold for, for almost a year, but now they've come back, and we're hearing from small businesses across, across the country about this onerous $100 per day per employee penalty which is penalizing small businesses that are trying to do the right thing, provide health insurance for their employees. So um, this, is a, this is a carefully crafted bill. It's got bipartisan support in both the House and Senate, and I certainly hope that we can move forward to a formal committee markup of the bill. I have two other bills I'd like to highlight, and again, I thank my colleague, Mr. Thompson, on this. But um, H.R. 928 is repealing the health insurance tax. For more than five years and three Congresses, I've been proud to introduce legislation to repeal the Affordable Care Act's annual tax on health insurance providers. And as the committee is well aware, the health insurance tax will generate $156 billion in revenue between 2017 and 2026, according to CBO estimates, uh, a cost that will be borne entirely on the backs of everyday Americans through increased premium cost and out-of-pocket expenses. Mr. Chairman, we've continued to see the cost of health insurance premiums and deductibles rise precipitously, while the portion of health care costs our insurance plans actually cover has declined. Americans are struggling, struggling to afford coverage at all. We could provide some relief uh, by simply repealing this onerous tax. This would be very helpful to small businesses and families. And I hope we can work with the committee to see this, uh, this a pathway on this. We were able to put the tax on hold uh, this year for this, uh, in the PATH Act, but it's going to bounce back. And we're, we're projected to see massive hikes in premiums in every state um, as a result of this tax. I'm hopeful we can do something on it. And lastly, I also I have another bill that I've co-sponsored with uh, my friend from California, Mr. Thompson, a bipartisan bill, H.R. 3539, Reinvigorating Antibiotic and Diagnostic Innovation Act. Uh, I want to highlight this bipartisan bill because uh, we've got problems today with uh, resistant bacteria and resistant infections in hospitals that no, no antibiotic treatment is available for them. Anti uh, bacteria tend to, to uh, change over time. They evolve and develop this resistance. And they lead to these horrible infections, sometimes after surgery, sometimes just uh, de novo infections. And what our legislation would do would be to establish a tax credit for up to 50% of the clinical development of expenses to incentivize the development of two components necessary to making progress to reducing these very virulent infections. First, new rapid diagnostic tests for initial and expedited identification of the underlying bacterial or fungal infection. We need this because delay, even by 24 hours, can cause deaths in a hospital and certainly extensive morbidity. So rapid detection and rapid uh, understanding of the underlying features of these infections is very important. And secondly, developing antibiotic and antifungal medications that treat these serious life-threatening infections for which there is currently no reliable medical course of action for recovery. Mr. Chairman, this two-pronged approach to jumpstart new innovation in antibiotics, antifungal medications, and diagnostics uh, will not only help to tackle the critical and growing problem of, medi of medication resistance, antibiotic resistance, but it also will help preserve medical innovation and in those industry jobs here in America. Uh, this is also a big source of cost in our hospitals today. And so this is a, a, a very small step, very important step, I believe, in, in, in spurring innovation. So I look forward to working with the committee to advance this legislation as well, and I, I yield back uh, my time. Thank you.